Okay. So uh, the session I want to you know talk about today is personal brand. It's something that I have invested a lot of time in, done a lot of research in over the years. And I open with this, which is to all Kiwis, you know, listening to this will know of what we call the tall poppy syndrome, uh, uh, which is something that was very much in my upbringing, which is that if you, if you, you know, if you grow too tall and stand out from everybody else, they'll, you'll be sure to be, if you like, chopped down or brought down to size or, or bored into check. And so this was how my career started out was very much, you know, go with the flow, don't stand out. But my, partially, I would say, my personality might not have been fully wired to accept that. And it was kind of like my non-Kiwi piece of me that when I looked overseas and I saw what people were doing in the community, the wider community, I saw that there was a need to stand out from the noise. In fact, the reason that, you know, when I became an MVP, uh, and this was in business applications area, I even forget what it was for originally, was because I noticed that if you weren't in America, you just didn't get the attention that you needed from the product team. And I noticed that MVPs got that attention. And this is when the MVP uh, uh, was, what, eight, nine years ago. So it was quite a bit smaller. And so I realized that I, some way, somehow, I needed to stand out um, from the crowd and develop a personal brand. So the first thing I want to say to those that feel that, you know, to stand out is is about all about me, look at me, uh, and drawing attention to yourself, that is not what personal branding is. It's not being an attention whore. It's not about comparison to others, and it's not about being false or fake. Uh, and it's you don't have to be an extrovert to build a personal brand. But it is about standing out in a crowded marketplace that we work in. And it's really important that if you want to particularly grow your career outside of your geography or just stand out from the myriad of CVs, just like um, Steve talked about there, is that you need to stand out some way. I, uh, I have a lot of people reach out to me on LinkedIn asking about getting jobs. It's funny, moving back to New Zealand, uh, everyone's reaching out to me, how can you get me a job in New Zealand? And and I look at these individuals who I have never met. They've only reached out via LinkedIn. And, and I look at their LinkedIn profile. I look at maybe their Twitter or something like that or their public persona. And there is nothing that makes them stand out. So as Steve said, you're getting 60 um, odd CVs for a single job. If you're not standing out publicly or in that CV from all the other cookie cutter CVs, et cetera, out there, and today, things like just getting certified is not a thing to stand out with because being certified is like um, that's entry to market or entry 101. So I want to make it very clear that building a personal brand is not, though, about drawing attention to yourself in a way that's, if you like, sometimes the media portrays outside the industry. It's really about being a maven and somebody that uh, influences um, others and therefore future employees, when they look at this, go, you know what, that person has influence. We would like that in our business. If you take a look at this here from Social Media Examiner, I think it raises a re some really good points around a personal brand. And it says here, a personal brand is a relationship with you, uh, an individual who exists separate from your company. The process of personal branding involves finding your uniqueness and building a reputation on the things you want to be known for and then allowing yourself to be known for them. So why is this important? So uh, just to give you a bit of story about my background, you know, many years ago, I started a company called Magnetism in New Zealand and Magnetism, you know, I came up with the name um, in my home office. I was working at another job at the time. And for two years, I kind of ran that company, um, you know, well being employed full time. And, you know, I'd fall, fallen in love with Dynamics uh, CRM as it was back then. And through that journey, really magnetism was my personal brand. It was me. I was magnetism. I was the face of the company. Everything around me and what I was, I was perceived, if you like, in market, particularly in New Zealand, but also started to grow in the U.S., was around magnetism. And then that company, I left that company and I moved to Australia. And all 
all the digital assets I had created, all the blogs I'd written, all the content I had created were owned by the company Magnetism. And at that point, I, 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 I realized it was very important to separate personal brand from corporation. And, you know, I actually learned a lot of my personal brand or sorry, my, my business branding from watching Intigen in the market. They were very good at branding um, at the time that I was starting my business. And I noticed that even people within Intigen kind of adopted that company brand until they were no longer working at that company. And once again, they'd got caught up in that culture of that business, but not really built their own identity independent of that. And, and so it's important to establish and establishing a personal brand that your business brand or, or your what your company is, is not you. You are employed by them and you, you know, as Steve said, as you get older in your career, you realize you're not just going to stay employed by one employer all your life. You're going to move around a bit and you don't want to, if you like, uh, put all your bets on that company um, in the future. And so make sure there's a separation of that brand. Then you've got to look at what's your unique contribution. Well, you know, where do you add value? What spins your wheels? What gets you excited? Because out of that kind of, in a part of who you are and where you you create, if you like, or the art you create is where your unique contribution comes. And it's what you will ultimately be, become known for. And so just, just interesting, you know, the MVP program is very much targeted as an individual, not at a company. I see companies going, oh, I want to get MVPs on the books and they want to leverage it for their company brand. But remember, the MVP program is, is totally about individuals. So I think this by Social Media Examiner really sums up what building a personal brand um, is all about. But you're probably saying, why? Why do I need a personal brand? What's the point of having a personal brand? And the key thing is to stand out from the myriad of noise and market. But I'll, I'll cover a couple of other things. It ex exposes you to new opportunities. So I was working in Sydney, Australia for four years after leaving New Zealand. Um, I was working for a company, SMS Management Technology, and I decided to leave that business and travel. There'd been four deaths in my family in quick succession, and I realized that just working all the time, more and more hours, was not – I had no more fulfillment. I was making – uh, a decent amount of money, but money was no longer a motivator for me at this point. And so I resigned and my wife and I decided to travel for 12 months overseas and just really, I don't know, do some soul searching and find out what life was all about, uh, you know, from other people's perspectives. Now, the company asked me not to resign. They asked me to uh, take a sabbatical instead. And so at the end of that 12 months, I was going to be returning to Sydney and taking up that role. Now, during that 12 months, about six months in, SMS management technology got sold in market to a Japanese company. And I've been through acquisitions before and they have not been pleasant experiences. And so I was like, wow, I want my restraint of trade off before I return to Australia. Um, and so I contacted the company. I resigned. And about 48 hours later, I was in London at the time. I put on LinkedIn that I had resigned from the company that I was staying traveling for another six months, but I um, I would not be returning to, to the business, um, SMS management technology. Now, what happened blew me away. Within about a 48-hour period, that post had over 70,000 um, uh, views on it. I was offered roles, jobs from every continent apart from Antarctica, um, I was offered roles in Microsoft Seattle, Microsoft London, uh, Microsoft Australia, and Microsoft New Zealand. Um, I was offered VC funding to start a whole new SI business um, from people that had seen my work, et cetera, in Australia. And so none of that would have happened if I hadn't become known in market, and particularly in a global presence in, in the global market, which I did under my brand NZ365 guy. And there's a long story around how, how that came about or why I didn't stick with Mark Smith. Um, and I'll just let you Google Mark Smith and you won't find anything about me because it's such a popular name. So one, it, it, it blows open the opportunities. It establishes your credibility because you build reputation and skills and strength become known in the market. It allows you to expand your network massively. Um, in fact, uh, if you do a bit of research in this area of expanding your net network and mathematical sociology, interpersonal ties are defined as information carrying connections between people. 
interpersonal chais come in three varieties, and I'm reading this here, strong, weak, or absent. In weak social ties, it is argued are responsible for the major majority sorry, of structure of social networks in society as well as the transmission of information. So why is this important? By the way, it came straight from Wikipedia, is that weak ties, it's not your friends and family they are going to help you get your next job. It's the weak ties, the people that you're associated with around the globe are potentially going to be people that influence or, or provide opportunities for, for you. And to top it off, it furthers your career. So jobs find you. I'm now in a position that if I um, say that I'm open for work, I get work. Um, and, and it's not... In New Zealand, it's generally all international type work that comes to me because over time I've built that personal brand and and the credibility, if you like, behind it. So three steps to build your personal brand. And I'm only going for three because there are so many more, but I wanted to distill down to three things that I think you need for a personal brand. The first is this, always be learning. If you're going to build a personal brand, people are going to start looking to you for your thought leadership. And if you don't, if you're not learning, if you're not constantly learning, you're not going to be a long term thought leader. And and when you're learning, it really needs to be with a childlike curiosity. I love this quote by Satya. And he said here, the learn it all does better than the know it all. And I think that is so, so poignant in that. In the time Saatchi has come into Microsoft, Microsoft has become a totally different organization um, from the Steve Ballmer area prior to him. And it really, people are much more as in, in engaging in the product teams and things like that. They are wanting to learn. They're wanting to find out what's your experience and, and how to apply it. And I think this is rubbing off around what you're seeing now, people in the community. The community has exploded and people are learning and sharing what they're learning. If you're learning, you'll never run out of content to share. Um, and you need to do two types of learning. Learn from dedicated research and learn from experience. I see too many people just say, wow, I've got experience. Um, I was doing a job interview in Melbourne, Australia, and this guy came to me and said, I've got experience. And he had seven years experience in Dynamics CRM 4.0. And the market had absolutely moved on from that point. And, and he had done no new certification. He knew nothing about the current version of the product. And he was like, but like, my, you know, I've been so long, you, my experience must count. And I said, <laughs> you haven't got the job because there was no history of ongoing learning um, as part of that. Now, I want to share a story that just came out a couple of days ago. Megan Walker, she's in the United Kingdom. She's an MVP. And she became famous about a year and a half, two years ago, and became known as Emoji Meg because she found out that emojis worked in Dynamics 365 and that's not just a cute thing. It actually makes the whole interface much more user interactive. It was an amazing post she did, and it got recognized all over the place. And she, you know, she was on a path of building a personal brand. And last year, she picked up Forms Pro as her thing, and she blogged on it constantly like she just kept pulling it apart finding new things there was you know where docs didn't have the answer where the, where the product team hadn't published anything she pulled this apart and she just wrote blog posts on it and i think right now when i checked um yesterday she had 68 blog posts on forms pro if you type in microsoft forms pro in the search engine she comes up on the first page because she is now considered the guru of microsoft forms pro now look at this see on the may the 23rd she published that she's doing another 30 days of tips and tricks, uh, in this case around Google Analytics, and she's and there's a lot of commentary around it. And she goes, if you really want to get good at something, just blog for 30 days on it. You will get right down into the weeds and discover it. And of course, what you'll do is create amazing content for people out there. And so she's put a challenge, take the 30 30 day challenge. I've noticed three female MVPs in the last year that became female that that became MVPs in the last year. Um, I know them all personally, and all of them did a, a th like this 30 day challenge, either 30, 60, or a 90 day challenge. And I tell you, they have become absolute authorities on these subjects and created amazing content and established their personal brand. So always be learning. The second point here is communication. Often in our community, we have strong technical skills, but where we let ourselves down is the soft skills. Steve spoke about that before, uh, about the importance of soft skills. And so I find every individual has a, a, a range of strengths, generally five dominant strengths. And 
Yet the individuals that I come across that are wanting to grow their brand, they always think it's about growing more skills, but it's about establishing what your clear strengths are and then adding whatever skills you need for wherever you, wherever you want to take yourself in life. So what do you want to be known for? What, what is your core strength? What do you accelerate in and then develop the skills that you want to be known for? Now, I recommend two resources here. The first here is five stars from good to great, um, the communication secrets to get five stars. And this is guy, a guy that's written a lot of books. I, I've read about four of his books. Um, he, he analyzed all of the TED Talks and found out what made winning um, presentations and speakers. And, and there's so much evidence from Bill Gates to other famous people around the world, the importance of learning to be a good public speaker. And so I recommend read this. And if you want to hone your skills, join Toastmasters. I recommend everybody to join Toastmasters, especially people that are really, really smart, but struggle to communicate that. Join Toastmasters. It'll transform your life after attending for about a year. The next is that become a writer. And this book here, Everybody Writes by Anne Handley, is just a fantastic book. If you don't feel like you can write, um, you know, blogging is still one of the best ways to hone your thinking. Last year, I set a challenge to write two blog posts a week of a thousand, minimum a thousand words. And I'm dyslexic. I never learned to read till I was um, 13 years of age is when I started primary school books and learning to read. Um, and so I hated writing. And so I just wanted to hone that skill. And if you look at my blog post at the start of last year, uh, opposed to eight months later, I did it for eight months straight. They totally changed because I honed the still. And so people say quantity over quality. I say I will go for quantity any day because it will build quality long term. Right. So go for quality, quantity to start with and you'll get better and better and better um, as you do it. Um, so I recommend that for writing. The other kind of distribution or communication is these days is media. So look at video and audio. How, how do you want to accelerate in that space? For me, I want to get good on audio. So I started a podcast three years ago um, and I, I now publish two shows a week and, and have done that for the last three years. Key products I use here, Camtasia. Uh, and, and if you're going to use Camtasia, don't just uh, play with it. Go in and do all the training videos on it. Get good at it. Um, uh, on iPad, I use LumaFusion for all my video editing and Adobe Spark um, for all my uh, graphic creation. The final thing here I say in person, building your personal brand is own your own home. It's so important. What am I talking about? I'm talking about your digital home. Own your own domain name and own your own website. You must, must do this. Don't rely on social media networks. They are distribution platforms that, or they are um, amplification platforms. They are not your home. Don't even rely on a um, um, uh, an ad-supported platform. For Australian, $18.54 a day. I checked yesterday, you can own your own domain name. That's a price of a bucket of KFC. And for $4.57, sorry, $4.56, that's the price of, and I'm talking Australian again, that's a price of a coffee a month. You can host a WordPress website on uh, a site like Bluehost, which just works. Now, a couple of things here. When I first became an MVP, I was in Seattle, a first MVP summit. I talked to, talk to a product manager called David Pennington. And he goes, oh, you're that company Magnetism, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he goes, hang on, I just want to look something up because I want to show you something on your website. And he typed in magnetism.com. I didn't have magnetism.com. I had magnetism.co.nz. And I learned right there is that the world tends to focus on .com. So for $18.54, I'd always buy the .com if you can get it of the brand name that you're going under. And if you can, always use your own personal name because then you can keep the site across whatever company and or career path you take. Um, one thing I hear um, and, and is, wow, we should use our own dog food. Why don't we build the website on Azure or stuff like that? Um, from somebody that's done it, from somebody that's run multiple WordPress websites on Azure, don't do it. Don't be silly. Um, sometimes dog food can be crap food and doesn't taste good. It's not necessarily designed fundamentally for that, and I wouldn't recommend you did that. Same with people trying to build it in our case on the PowerApps portals. Not a good idea. Use it for demos, but don't use it for a CMS or content management platform. A couple of things here. Make sure you have a clear av avatar on all your profiles. Make sure it's a photo, it's professional, or it portrays you in a light that your audience would expect in our community. Um, in my case, I built a brand NZ365 guy purely because my name was so common in the Western world. And so I needed to stand out, um, particularly in search engines and discoverability. And third, build hashtags around the things that you do. 
This hashtag 90 day MC stands for the 90 day mentoring challenge. Something I started two years ago. I've trained or taken over 200 people now through this 90 day mentoring challenge, did a hundred this year in the first part of it. And I just find it allows you to once again, uniquely stand out, but allows people to talk back to you using your own hashtag rather than adding you or something like that. And it works across, you know, most of the platforms. So secure your name on all social media platforms is really important. Even if you don't use them, make sure go cyber squat them just so nobody else is going to um, use them in the future. If you can only use one social media platform, and this is your bonus, it is LinkedIn. Become a master of LinkedIn. It is our business domain that we operate in. Um, at our Stanford University, if you look up Stanford University and a paper called The Strength of Weak Ties, you will see why the importance of having a massive network of connections on LinkedIn is so important in building a personal brand. If you want to really never have to worry about where your jobs come from in the future, that the jobs find you so, so important. And with that, I'll wrap up. I'm Mark Smith, otherwise known as the NZ365 guy. I do like to connect, learn, and share. If you want to check out my podcast, you can see I'm there. I've got three shows that run um, every week and happy to connect to anyone on LinkedIn or any of those social media networks.